Madam President. Senator from Nevada. Thank you, Madam President. I rise today to discuss an issue that's been in the forefront of many Americans' minds ringing in the new year, and that is extending benefits for the unemployed, something that's important, of course, for a lot of Americans. Before I begin, I want to thank uh, my colleague and friend from Rhode Island, Senator Jack Reed, for his hard work and effort on this behalf um, as we work together, our staffs have worked together to get this proposal moved forward for today's vote. And I hope that my friends and colleagues here in the Senate enjoyed their holidays and that everyone returned refreshed and ready to tackle some of the tough issues that we have here in 2014. Unfortunately, while Congress was in recess, approximately 17,000 Nevadans greeted the new year not with the optimistic expectations of a fresh start, but with the anxiety about how they're going to feed their families or perhaps even pay their utility bills. When Congress left Washington, D.C. in December, a lot of important matters were left undone and expired. As a result, millions of Americans were left with no idea whether or not their employment benefits were going to be fixed retroactively, something that has become, of course, all too common for this Congress to do. Helping the, those in need should not be a partisan issue. Providing a limited social net is one of the responsibilities of the federal government. Unfortunately, instead of planning ahead, figuring out the best way to do that, we are now forced to decide whether or not to reinstate these benefits after they've expired. We should provide some relief to the millions of Americans that were left hanging when Congress went home in December and temporarily extend unemployment benefits for the next three months. It is the right thing to do. That short period will help these families whose benefits expired abruptly while Congress works out a longer term solution that provides Americans with some certainty and is fiscally responsible. I understand my colleagues' concerns about the cost and their desires to, to pay for this extension. I, too, want to see our federal debt brought under control, and I think my voting record is proof of that concern. I, too, believe that Congress should be more focused on passing laws that actually help create jobs. Growing our, com our, our economy should be the primary focus and concern of this body. As a senator of the state that leads the nation in un unemployment, believe me, I understand the importance of refocusing on jobs. I'd rather be down here discussing today innovative ways of creating jobs instead of the need to extend unemployment benefits yet again. But Madam President, because of this administration and even some of the choices of this body, unfortunately, our economy is not growing quickly enough, quickly enough, and many Americans are still hurting, including a lot of Nevadans. My state is struggling. I've repeated often on this floor that Nevada consistently tops the chart in unemployment, bankruptcies, and in foreclosures. The statistics are surely revealing. But more startling is the obvious increase in impoverished Nevadans that I meet when I go home. And I'd like to share an example, Madam President. Every Thanksgiving, Every Thanksgiving, one or two of my children join me in serving Thanksgiving dinner to folks in Reno who are in need and cannot cook a Thanksgiving meal for themselves. This year, my daughter Emmy, in her freshman year in college, joined me in this experience. Every year, that dinner sees more and more attendees. Every year, the number of individuals and families who need help increases. This year, the venue was absolutely packed. When my daughter and I arrived, the line was four blocks long outside that venue. It is such an obvious example of how so many Nevadans are unable to provide for their basic needs, and this cannot be ignored. I know that many economists point to a national employment rate that's improving, but at home, we don't feel it. The unemployment rate in Nevada has consistently far exceeded the national average. In fact, the Silver State has led the nation for the past three years in unemployment, and the results are, of course, people in Nevada are really hurting. It is difficult to stand here in the nation's capital, an area that has largely felt little negative impact of the recession, and describe 
just how tough times are for so many of my constituents. At these Thanksgiving dinners, I hear about choices individuals are forced to make, whether to buy gas for their car, pay for heat in the frigid northern Nevada weather, or to buy school supplies for their children, or perhaps save for the future. These are hard working individuals who rely on these benefits. They are trying to find a job. They want to provide for their children. But for these benefits to simply vanish without giving families a time to plan or figure out alternatives to help them get by, to me, is just not right. I too understand the concerns about the cost of these benefits. I would prefer to see them paid for in a manner that does not burden our nation with more debt. I have previously introduced legislation that would do just that. Legislation that would extend unemployment benefits while still paying for them. At the time, I introduced my legislation as an alternative to a more costly bill because I think it's important to bring our nation's debt down. I'm ready to work with my colleagues to introduce similar legislation again this year. But in the meantime, I propose that we pass this short extension now that we would allow Congress the opportunity to spend the next three months debating how to pay for these benefits in the future, or perhaps how much longer they should be extended. Those are important questions worthy of more debates. But in the meantime, Congress simply must provide some temporary relief for those who are unemployed. Paying for these, benef these benefits would be the best approach. Congress could have taken the harder road to figure out a way to do that be before departing for the holiday break and leaving, a mil leaving millions of Americans hanging. But they didn't. So let's pass this short-term extension and focus on a more fiscally responsible solution for the longer term. Madam President, thank you, and I yield the floor.